Hey guys, uh, I'm here with Ashley, Hannah, and Miss Barbara, and they've been interviewing each other's stories during our MTA, right? They got some uh, <laughs> final projects they want to show. So let's start with Barbara's project. She interviewed Ashley, so let's check out her story. My name is Ashley Ritchie, and this is my story. I grew up in a Christian home. I was the firstborn. I got saved at a very young age. I spent all my elementary school years in Awanas and made friends there. I went to all the vacation Bible schools and just became close with a lot of kids at a young age in the same environment. That was the start to my foundation of surrounding myself with Christian people. So in the middle of fifth grade, my parents made the decision to move to North Carolina because my dad got a new job that was going to be better for our family. So that was very devastating. I, I thought it was the worst thing in the world that could ever happen. I didn't want to leave my friends. I, I had two younger brothers, so it wasn't like I was going completely alone. I was worried about making new friends. And as I entered into middle school and became part of the youth group there, I, even though it was a huge church, I was able to find people that believed in Jesus. I wasn't as sad about moving because I had this group of friends that surrounded me and we did, we did everything together all the way up in, until high school. Middle school and high school years were really tough for me because around between eight and 10 years old, my parents got divorced. The friends that I had, they were still there for me. They surrounded me with love and even though depression set in and everything, they kept me going. When parents got divorced, you know, I was kind of at a crossroads. I, uh, could have gone two different directions. I could have become rebellious. As I got older, got into anywhere from drugs, alcohol, could have just been sneaking out, you know, running around with the wrong people. Um, but instead, I was lucky enough to know Jesus and know that everything happens for a reason, you know, even though at the time I thought, you know, why, why me? You know, I never thought this would happen to me. So after building this great foundation with my friends. You know, high school was coming to an end, and my mom decided that she wanted to move back here to Pensacola to be with all of our family that lived here. Once again, you know, thought it was the end of the world. I was so close. They were like my second family that I, I didn't want to leave them. I uh, constantly wished I had my friends here, and I think that really hindered me from you know, living in the past and not being able to move forward and try and make these relationships with new people. And so I just, I had to give it to God. I got here and that's when family really, really became important to me. I'm really thankful that this God has brought certain people into my life who have been able to help me through the difficulties of my my parents' divorce, having to move away from people that I called my family. It's been tough, but um, I just, you know, give it to God. I have to take one day at a time. He, he has a plan for me. And for anybody who maybe isn't a Christian or doesn't know God, I just would say that, you know, you need to take that leap of faith. See what He could have in store for you just by giving your life to Him and just having that trust. My name is Ashley Ritchie, and that's my story. All right, Barbara did a great job with uh, Ashley's promo, and it was just great to see. What did you, how did you think she did? I think she did a, a great job, like she said, about stories, you know, may not be as, you may feel they're insignificant. That's kind of how I felt about my story. So after seeing that, I realized that my story can affect people. Yeah, and uh, Ashley Ritchie, 
uh, not to be confused with the missionary Ashley Ritchie, but maybe in the future. Maybe. <laughs> um, she works with Teen Challenge uh, here in Pensacola, and you actually did your project on... Miss Hannah. Miss Hannah, that's <laughs> right. All right, so let, uh, let's roll that uh, project and see how she did. My name is Hannah, and this is my story. My childhood growing up was very different, I would say, than most people. I grew up in a really big house on the lake with seven siblings. Um, it's been fun. I love my siblings. Um, we're so close, and I think that's awesome. And m both of my parents made it very, like, our lives centered around family a lot. You know, as much as I love uh, being in part of such a big family, you know, there, there's challenges in that. You know, no family is perfect. A, a lot of the things that were particularly hard to me was, you know, I'm the second youngest kid. For the long time, you know, you live in the shadows of your older siblings and they go on and they do these incredible things and then you're just, you know, 13-year-old Hannah, no one notices you. Being overlooked for a little bit, you know, that really made me, it changed me, I think. Um, it really gave me a desire to be very driven and very independent and kind of this overachieving attitude. You know, I have a tendency to strive for perfection. The only thing that you, that comes out of trying to be something that you can ever be is honestly just, it's disappointment. You just get disappointed in yourself. It was last year um, when that desire for um, perfection really, really got to me. And one of the areas that was really bad was um, was just my weight. You know, I decided that I wanted to be really, really healthy because my friends were. Of course, with that tendency to just overachieve, I took it to a complete different level than they did. And a lot of harm came out of it. You know, um, I lost a lot of weight. I lost 20 pounds, 30 pounds. I went from 120, which was a good weight for me, you know, healthy, to in the 90s and my friends and my family were really worried about me and my mom was just crying one day and she said I don't want you to go down this road I don't want you to go down this path you know God has so much more for you and you're hurting yourself and you don't realize it to hear her say that to me you know it really it was a reality check. And she had me talk to um, this lady about the things that I was going through. And that's when I realized that, you know, all of this stemmed from this crazy desire to be at God's level. And you can't put yourself there. I'm not at that state that I was. Um, I did gain a lot of my weight back, and um, I'm, at, I'm a healthier person now. But, you know, there's still consequences from that. There's consequences from sin, and um, you know, sometimes I'll think really long and hard before I eat something, and those are still there. And you know, God's still working on me. And to anyone that's struggling with that, those kind of things, it's a problem. It's, it's a problem. It's not just, I have it under control. Because I said that for the longest time. You know, I would just say, talk to someone. And more importantly, like do yourself the favor and accept that it's a problem. It's not fun. It's not, it's not fun living in that bondage. And that's exactly what it is. And God didn't mean for you to live in bondage. You know, maybe you're watching this and you're saying, well, I don't believe in God. I don't really believe in anything. There, There is a God and He loves you and He accepts you with 
the baggage, with the brokenness. And that, that's so, something so amazing about Him, is He takes all that and He makes it new if you, if you allow Him to. And He loves you so much, you know. He, I mean, He sent His Son to die for you, and that's, there's no greater love. There really isn't. And it's hard to accept yourself, but God accepts you. And that's so amazing. Sing, 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 sing. I wanted to share my story because it's a part of me and it can help someone else. And I'm not ashamed because God works through it and I'm excited for that. I'm taking this class because I've always wanted to work in the ministry somehow and I want to do videography or some kind of media production in different countries um, working with missionaries and this is the great place to start and missionographers right here and so this that's why I'm here and I'm so excited to learn everything that I can and everything my name is Hannah and I'm a missionographer. 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 All right, that was pretty good. Pretty good. And it was amazing to hear, um, you know, sometimes when you get involved with uh, interviewing somebody, you're not necessarily knowing what you're going to hear. So to hear some of Hannah's story and kind of the struggles that she had. Uh, Hannah, what was it like uh, being interviewed and uh, was it nerve-wracking or? Um, yeah, actually, we were assigned to give our personal testimony, and I thought about it a lot. And I just, I didn't think I had a testimony. You know, I've always been a Christian, you know, from when I was really little. And I prayed about it a lot. And when I was in front of the camera, you know, I just started talking. And you know, God really led me to just speak about some of the things that I had faced and I had to overcome. So I thought that was incredible. All right, great. And your project was on? Uh, Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara, okay. And what did you learn doing that project? Yeah, um, I learned uh, a different style of doing a piece on someone. You know, I've done like stories, features on other people, but I really liked how you um, wanted us to do like this dramatic um, feel to it. And, that was new, and I, I really, really like it. I really like it a lot. Awesome. <laughs> and so you're going to be uh, interning yes, with okay. us uh, after the class, so uh, it's going to be fun yeah. to learn even more. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, let's just take a quick look at uh, Hannah's produced project of Miss Barber's testimony. I was born in Hammond, Indiana, May 30th, 1949. When I was born, there were two older brothers, and then four years later, my sister was born. A friend came into uh, the area, and she said, would you like to go to church with us? And I said, church, what's that? I had never been to church in my entire life and knew nothing about God. I went to church, it was Hesville Baptist Church in Hammond. But after that, every week, a bus came by and picked me up. But on May 30th, 1959, at the age of nine years old, I remember sitting in the morning service, the second row, right on the edge of the, of the pew, uh, on the aisle. And when the preacher gave the invitation and I went forward, I went forward and the pastor, uh, youth pastor's wife, her name was Dodie Bimers, talked to me and led me to the Lord. I prayed that day. There was a camp on Monday night. They had an invitation, I went forward. On Tuesday morning, they had an invitation, I went forward. Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Wednesday night. Thursday morning, they had an invitation and I remember thinking, I'm gonna go forward and get saved. And I thought, wait a minute, I already did this. And I think at that point, I realized finally that it was forever. And I have never doubted my salvation since that time. But then at age 14, there were problems in my family, as always there are in unsaved families. My mom was coming to church, my brother and my sister, my oldest brother didn't come. We rode the bus every Sunday. If that church hadn't sent a bus, 
I would have never been able to go to church. I cannot do anything but thank those people. Mr. Barnett, who was my bus driver all those years, and the different captains that we had that they spent that time, thought it was important to come pick up little kids. We were, we were a little poor family. This was a little dirty bus kid that came in in little raggedy clothes. We weren't anybody important. And God was good enough to have people give their money for that. So things got a little bit tough. I think those teenage years are always a disaster anyhow. My dad had issues. So he was just an angry man. And I always tell people, I said, you know, he cursed so much that um, we had to dig, when he, when he would say something, I had to dig through the bad words in order to find the subject and verb so I knew what we were supposed to do. Sometimes the, my dad would beat my mother and we'd, I, they'd send me next door to go get the police. There, things that you don't like to remember that are tough things. And I remember there was, it was winter, a very bad winter up north. We didn't have any heat in our house. And we didn't have much to eat. And by that time, we had a little tiny house that was about the size of a two-car garage. It was 20 by 20, and, but it had a little tiny staircase to an unfinished attic. There's a little tiny window. You could look out, I could look out to the alley. There was a street light in the alley. It was snowing. The snow was falling down. It was middle of February. Huge battle going on downstairs. I'm cowering upstairs in my little tiny corner, hiding in the dark and the cold. And I remember looking out that window and saying, God, I don't want to live like this the rest of my life. And if you talk about a defining moment, it had, in my mind, that is nothing that I ever thought was a prayer. I don't even know if I prayed. I don't remember anything except remembering this particular thought. I don't want to live like this the rest of my life. But I look back at that one little tiny time, looking through that window, thinking to myself, God, I didn't even know to pray. I didn't even know how to pray, but I think that God really recognized in my heart, I really had an interest to serve God. And I tell people now, you can fight anything you want in the scriptures, but I'll tell you what, it works. And the other ways don't work. I would say to anybody who's listening, who's struggling, it's very simple. The Bible says repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. I simply come to God and say, I'm a mess. I tell him this every day. God, I'm a mess. I need you. I know I can't save myself. I know I can't help myself. I know Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that. I accept him as my savior. Today, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin and accept me as your child. All right, uh, that was a great testimony, Ms. Farber, and just to hear the, uh, how God led you through all those uh, difficult circumstances. And uh, that's what uh, really being a missionographer is all about, is sharing these stories uh, with each other and uh, hopefully getting them out to the world so people can see what God is doing. And uh, so glad to have you guys this go around and uh, hope you continue with your uh, producing and learning. It's always a constant learning process. And uh, would you recommend the class? Absolutely. Of course. Yes, definitely. Yes, definitely. Yeah? It's been Come awesome. Take the class. Come take yeah. the class. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks guys for watching. Thanks for watching their uh, final projects. And uh, yeah, if you know anybody who would like to take the missionographer class, they can go to missionographer.com to register. All right, till next time, I'm Ian. See ya.